so welcome everyone to Uganda Cultural Webinar Series. Um, my name is Norman. I will be the the, the webinar uh, host or moderator. And Femi is going to be my vice or co-host or moderator. Um, yeah. So we've got speakers from um, from Uganda. We've got um, Samali P1. Um, uh, okay. Uh, okay, I've been told to wait a little bit time for the participants to join in, so I'm going to stop and wait for, for five more minutes. Okay, so so it's just to clear the, the the we are going to start the webinar at five minutes past three. That's when we are going to officially start it. Uh, we are just waiting for people to to join the meeting. So yeah, apologies for that. Okay, I hope our Femi is also online. And um, speakers, how are you doing, guys? To Sam Lipuan and um, and Peter Aomazi, how is it there in Uganda? Apparently. Uh, we we are good. Uh, so I'm Peter Ahumuza, uh, and I'm fine. Uh, currently in uh, Kigali, Rwanda. Um, um, doing uh, pursuing uh, a master's degree uh, in information technology from uh, Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, same as Samali, but I'll let her talk on her own behalf. Yeah, but otherwise I'm great. Thanks. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Thank you Norman. Uh, we're doing good. It's a lovely day in Kigali, and we're excited to be here. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Simili. Uh, I've noticed that you both are uh, at, uh, at Carnegie Mellon University, is it? <laughs> Yes, that's correct. Oh, uh, that's that's very that's very nice. Okay, so I think maybe it's time for us to get into business. I will just restart by introducing myself. Um, and welcoming everyone. So, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Ugandan Cultural Emission. Um, me, I'm called Nomin. It says I will be your <clears throat> the host for the meeting. I've got Femi. is going to be the vice host. Um, and we've got uh, our speakers from Uganda. We've got Samali Piwan. She's currently residing in Kigali, in uh, in Rwanda. Uh, so Samali is currently pursuing master's degree in information technology at Carnegie Mellon University, that is in Rwanda. She specializing in data science and applied machine learning. Um, she, when she was growing, she used to be um, fascinated about writing her books. Um, yeah, so that's some for you. And we've got another speaker, um, Peter Aumuza. She is also currently residing in Kigali in Rwanda. Peter Aumuza is also studying his master's degree in information technology at Carnegie Mellon University in Kigali. So yeah, we've got two people who are IT enthusiasts. So yeah, we're really blessed. And um, 
Uh, Peter is also dedicating leveraging his education and skills to make a positive impact in the field of uh, information technology. So yeah, so Peter Omaza in uh, summary is going to, to inform us about the dense uh, cultures and norms that are there in Uganda. And yeah, that will be it. So. Uh, we're going to dedicate the last 15 minutes of our webinar allocated to question and answers. So, yeah, if you have any questions, I'm just humbly uh, asking you to just last 15 minutes of, of the webinar. So, yeah, um, Peter, I'm now passing on the podium to you so that you may start up with the work. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Um, I think uh, somebody will share a screen um, and then uh, we can get started. Thank you, Peter. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see. I can see the screen. Just... Okay, yes, so yes. let's get right into it. Okay, so... Uh, once again, my name is Samadhi, and I'm excited to be here to tell you all about Uganda, also called the Pearl of Africa. Um, we get right into it on our first slide with a picture of a lake. Uh, this is one of the many lakes in Uganda. It's called Lake Bunyonyi, and it's a crater lake. But before we get that far, let's first tell you about the origins of Uganda. So uh, Uganda is located in East Africa. We are in that country there. And we are bordered by South Sudan, by Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. And many of you might know the name of our capital city, which is called Kampala. And a fun fact is that Kampala was actually named after the Impala, which is an animal. and Around the time the name was given, it's because the area in which Kampala is now had a lot of impalas. And so the name Kampala is derived from the animal itself. And Uganda started out as a British colony. So we were colonized by Britain and we gained our independence on the 9th of October in 1962. This is around the time when a lot of African countries were also gaining their independence from British rule. So we were among those. And interestingly enough, for our first leadership and our first president, what happened was that um, historically, Uganda is structured into kingdoms. We had many kingdoms. And the core area where a lot of the British activity was, was in a kingdom called Buganda. So um, when it was time for independence to be given back to Uganda, the kingdom of Uganda fronted a political party that they called Kawaka Yeka. Kawaka means king and Yeka means alone. So this political party's name is actually the king alone. But um, we also had members from other parts of the country who decided to form their own political party, which they called the Uganda People's Congress. So because of the because both groups were so big, what happened was that the only way that election could be won was through an alliance. And so our first president was actually the king of Uganda at that time. Uh, his name was Kabaka Edward Mutesa II. And he was representing Kabaka Ika. But to, re to represent UPC, we also had the prime minister called Milton Obote, who later went on to become the president of Uganda twice. So that's it for our political history. And next, our beautiful flag. So you might notice my background, Peter's, and everywhere on these slides, we have the black, yellow, and red. Uh, Uganda's flag is very colorful. It's very distinct, but every color has a meaning. So first is the black, which represents the color of our skin as Ugandans, proudly African. Then the red is meant to symbolize our unity in the fact that underneath the skin, we all have red blood, and it's a reminder as Ugandans to ourselves to be united. And then, the yellow represents the abundant sunshine in Uganda. Now, I'm not sure if you know this, but the, the equator runs through Uganda. And so 
because of that, it's we have very good weather in Uganda. It's nearly always sunny. And when it rains, the rain is just enough. The weather in Uganda is perfect. So the yellow represents the sun in Uganda. Now, on the right, you might notice a little bird. And even on our flag, you'll notice that right in the middle, there's a bird. Now, this is called the crested crane. It's our national bird, very protected in Uganda. And uh, you're not allowed to touch this bird. And it was chosen because if you look at a picture of this crested crane, you'll notice that it has all three colors of the flag. So it has the black on its face and the red as well. Then its crown is yellow. So in honor of our flag, we chose to add this bird into the middle of the flag. Now, I would also like to walk you through the coat of arms for Uganda. Now, I'm going to just um, focus on this little map that we have on the right. You'll notice that Uganda, in as much as it's a small country, there are a lot of uh, lakes and rivers scattered all around. Now, a lot of that was brought into our coat of arms, and I'll walk you through clockwise. At the very top of our coat of arms, we have the shield and spears. Uh, signifying the traditional ways that we used to protect and defend ourselves. Then to the right, we have our national bird, the crested crane. Then uh, next, we have black background, which implies our skin color. And then once again, the sun, because we are along the equator. Then the drum was added also to honor our culture, because um, in our cultures, Drumming is used when we are celebrating through dancing. It's used for ceremonies and rituals. And also when you want to bring people together, traditionally, you would play the drums and then have the whole community gather. So we added the drum there to symbolize both our culture and our unity. Then on the scroll, you'll notice our national motto, which is for God and my country, which is something that we all live by. At the bottom, you'll notice blue stripes. And this is meant to represent uh, the River Nile, which has its source in Uganda, in a town called Jinja. If you look at where my casa is right there, coming out of Lake Victoria is where the River Nile starts. Then we also have a few plants and representations of agriculture. So because of all the water bodies and the good weather in Uganda, agriculture is a very big industry. Food grows very well and we grow a lot of food. Historically, we used to export, we used to go and export cash crops. So we have coffee and cotton represented on the coat of arms. And then finally, at the top of the coat of arms, we have waves uh, denoting Lake Victoria, which has a lot of its um, area covered within Uganda. And finally, the Uganda Corp, which signifies the wildlife that we have in Uganda. All across the country, we have so many national parks and animals, and this is represented in the Cob. So next, I'll hand over to Peter to walk you through our beautiful culture. Uh, thank you very much, Sama. So uh, recently, we had uh, a cultural day at, at uh, Kanagi Melon, and uh, uh, um, this is me and a couple of colleagues who were who put on uh, Ugandan um, cultural Attire. So um, on the extreme left uh, is myself, and I was putting on the, the Karamajong uh, attire. So the Karamajong are in the north northeast part of, of, uh, of Uganda, and they are mainly cattle keepers. Uh, next to me is a colleague of mine, uh, Skovia Achan. So she was putting on the Buganda uh, traditional dress, which is called the Chikoi and very wonderful pearls. And then they tie it with that white it's a belt. And then uh, it's normally used at traditional functions. And next to her is uh, Lynn, who is putting on the, uh, so the, the Chiko is from central Uganda. So Lynn is putting on the, the Kasuti from Western Uganda. It's, it's a very nice dress that the ladies, they wear on special occasions like weddings, uh, they use it to go to church and any special functions that they that that are held within the country. And then on the extreme right, uh, holding the flag is my namesake Peter Wawio. He's putting on the kanzu and the suit. Uh, it's normally put on at traditional functions as well. Um, the actual ceremony that we use it for is the one when 
uh, you are the groom and uh, you're going to be introduced at your wife to be as uh, function at her home when they're going to introduce you. It's a very wonderful occasion, right? So on the next slide, um, we'll talk about, uh, we'll talk about again, the Uganda, it's very rich in terms of uh, 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 um, tribes and tradition. So we have over 56 uh, diverse tribes in Uganda. Uh, so myself, I come from the west part of Uganda. Uh, Somali comes from another part of Uganda. So, and then the, the most common languages, um, we have the official language, which is English, and then which we use in, in all our official documents and also the language you use at school to study. Uh, the most popular local language is Luganda. Um, we'll basically talk you through uh, the kingdoms and and we'll talk about more Uganda, but uh, uh, the, one of the most common greetings in Uganda for good morning is Masuzotia for one person or Masuzotia for many people. And also a, a common way of saying hi is Jevaleko. Um, like it's just like saying hi, hello. Yeah, so you would normally say Jevaleko. So if you come to Uganda, you will probably get that a lot. Someone will say Jevaleko, Jevaleko. Then you will respond JND. Yeah, okay. Um, then the other language, which is the East African language, because Uganda is part of East Africa, is Swahili. Uh, Swahili is not so popular in Uganda, but we are starting to learn it in schools so that we can adopt it as one of the official languages that we use because of the East African community. And also we have very many other and many others. So the most popular religions in Uganda, we have the Christianity, which encompasses the Anglicans, the Catholics, the SDAs, um, also Pentecostals, and then Islam. Uh, we also have the Orthodox, um, uh, who have their church in Uganda that you know helps to uh, bring two people together. Uh, the population of Uganda is 45 million and growing. Um, it's uh, it's we are a very active country, very youthful, and we are very active in terms of increasing our numbers. Uh, the politics uh, from independence in 1986, we have had eight presidents. Uh, the current president is uh, uh, President Yuri Kaguta Museveni, who is the chairperson of the National Resistance Party that has been in power since 1986. Uh, Yuri was involved in the war that deposits of uh, Idi Amin. Uh, if you know Idi Amin is one of the popular dictators uh, we've had in Africa. Uh, he was also involved in a rebellion that ended the, the rule of Milton Obote regime in 1985. And also we've had the shortest, the shortest president that served was Yusuf Lay, who ruled for 68 days. He was literally in office for basically months and he was kicked out. Uh, so we'll talk about the uh, the next slide. We'll talk about the notable politicians, as I mentioned, Idi Amin. He's a very notorious dictator who ruled Uganda uh, early, early, early in the early times. He's known for expelling Indians. So he woke up one morning and he said that Ugandans were the Indians were milking the economy of Uganda, and so he wanted them out of the country. So um, he abruptly ended the their stay. Gave them. Uh, 90 days to leave the country and so they left the country uh they and the indians if you know them they are popular for um, doing business and they were very involved in a lot of business in the country so he expelled them leaving their business in the hands of ugandans now the ugandans didn't know how to look after this business and so most of them collapsed and so also if you visit uganda uh in towns like jinja you will find that there are a lot of buildings in the major cities in Kampa in, in in uganda jinja kawale uh and other major cities, you'll find a lot of buildings that have the style, they build them in the style of the Indians, the flat roofs, and then the, the shape and the designs uh, are basically Indian. So they were very prominent at that time. Uh, during Idi Amin's rule, uh, UK ended diplomatic relations with uh, Idi Amin, with Uganda, because in, in 1977, because he was very, very arrogant. And uh, he also gave himself titles. He declared himself conqueror of the British Empire. Uh, he was also called His Excellency, President for Life. 
uh, field marshal, field marshal, which is the highest rank in the army. He declared himself a uh, highest marshal, uh, the field marshal. He was also VC, vice chancellor of uh, Makere University, which is a very prominent university in Uganda, the best. And also DSO, MC, CBE, among others. He also declared himself the lord of all beasts on earth and fishes in the sea, conqueror of the British Empire, as I had mentioned, uh, empire in Africa in general and Uganda in particular. He was also the uncrowned king of Scotland. He he he, he declared himself the, the king of Scotland. Uh, if you have if you're a movie lover and you've watched the movie The Last King of Scotland, it's a Hollywood movie. Um, uh, starring Forrest Whitaker. Uh, if you haven't watched it, you should go and watch it. It tells the story of Idi Amin Dada uh, in the eyes of Hollywood. And it was a, it's a very interesting story that depicts the kind of role that Idi Amin had in Uganda. And uh, then moving on to the next. Uh, the history of Uganda in terms of kingdoms. So we had the, we have the most prominent kingdom, or the biggest. Uh, uh, ruled by the first, the Kabaka Mtesa I, um, who was um, the Uganda king. And okay, this is the religious history. Uh, so in 1980, in, in 1877, uh, he wrote a letter to the missionaries to come to Uganda, Alexander Mackay of the Anglican Church Missionary, Church Missionary Society. He came to Uganda. Then a group of French Catholic white fathers led by Pierre, Father Pierre Simon Lodell, also known as Father Mapera, arrived two years later so um, to start the missionary work in Uganda. Then we also had Arab traders from Zanzibar who introduced Islam into the country. And uh, also the, the missionaries were responsible for the growth of Christianity in, the, in, in Uganda. And then on October 29, 19, 1885, uh, in, incoming Anglican Bishop Joseph James Huntington was assassinated on the eastern border of uh, the Buganda King to send a message to the British to stop uh, inroads um, in, in Uganda. So there was quite a bit of friction uh, between the missionaries and the King and the Buganda Kingdom. Uh, and then moving on to the next slide. Uh, so, uh, as you may know, people who adopted Christianity, we have the, uh, it, it, it kind of came into conflict with the kingdom. He uh, Kabaka Mutesa felt a bit, I think, threatened by the, the way the Christians were multiplying and increasing. So he wanted Christianity to stop. And so he put a brutal, he, he tried to put a brutal end to, to uh, Christianity uh, by uh, by burning uh, a, a, a total of 23, uh, 22 Ang Catholics and 23 Anglican converts in the Christian, in the, in the, in Christianity, uh, because um, of their beliefs in uh, Christianity. So these were known to be, this, these were the matters that you hear about in Uganda. And we have a popular, these were killed by Mwanga too, the Kabaka of Uganda at the time. Uh, um, so in, in honor of the, the Uganda Matters, and the next slide, we, we celebrate 3rd June as Matters Day uh, in Uganda. Every 3rd June, we have the pilgrimage to the site where the Uganda Matters were, were, were burnt. So we have the famous Nambongo Shrine, where people gather from all over the country, and also have people who come in from other countries. So um, we also have had visits from, from the... Uh, former Pope Francis, who has visited and celebrated with in 2015, celebrated uh, Uganda Matters on 3rd June um, with the rest of the Christians in the country. And then moving on to the next. Okay, so I will be walking you through some of the cuisine in Uganda. And we're going to start with Western Uganda, Peter's home where their staple food is what we call kalo and the shabwe. So I'll break it down. Kalo is made from, um, the English translation would be millet bread. A lot of cultures have some form of, um, the most common term I can use is maybe posho, um, which is ugali, for example. Now think of ugali, but this time made with millet flour. That's what kalo is. And then a shabwe is made from ghee, which is whipped with the uh, Rock, rock salt and water to give it the consistency of mayonnaise. 
and sometimes roasted meat is added to this too. So it the consistency is sort of like mayonnaise and uh, with color. This is a staple food in Western Uganda. Then when we come back to Central Uganda, we have what we call matoke, which is these green bananas with binyewa, which is groundnut stew. Now, what we do is we take groundnuts, we pound them into a powder, and then we cook them inside banana leaves for two hours or more until it comes out like this. And most people prefer to have this eaten with the banana leaf, but it can also be made without. Then when you come to Northern Uganda, which is my home, uh, on that side of town, what we usually do is we get peanut butter, what we call lodi. Uh, we get peanut butter and then we cut up leaves and make a paste that combines the two to give you something that looks like this. And this is usually had with uh, either kalo, as stated earlier, or sweet potatoes or ugali, whatever you have in the house. Then because we have a lot of rivers in the north, we are also very big on uh, fishing and one of the most popular fish to come out of the north is called angara which is this dry fish here very delicious then traditionally when you think ugandan food one of the first things that comes to mind is something called luombo this is a specialty of the buganda tribe and what they do is earlier i had mentioned groundnut stew but we can also do this with uh, beef and with chicken and what's done is you get the beef and cook it in these uh, banana leaves for a very long time until it comes out very soft and it's a very tasty deal, um, meal. And it's also culturally renowned because it's reserved for special days such as intro um, wedding introductions, um, the wedding ceremony itself and special days like that. And you can see here a picture of a groom. So traditionally when a Muganda man has gone to meet the family of the bride. He's supposed to be served with a lot of luombo to show that they are welcoming him into the home and they're respecting him. And that's why they serve so much. Then I can't talk about Ugandan food without talking about the Rolex. Um, whereas other countries, the Rolex is a watch. For us, the Rolex is this food. Uh, it's made of eggs wrapped in chapati. And there are variations to how you can make the eggs. You can add vegetables or not and do whatever you want with it. And you're going to love Rolex so much that uh, one of our very own called Raymond Kahuma is currently the world Guinness record holder for making the world's biggest Rolex, where he came up with a Rolex that was three meters in diameter and it weighed 250 kilograms. I think it took them about three days to make, and it was a whole event in Uganda that we pulled off this world record. Now, when you come to Uganda, uh, you're welcome to. You might find Rolex in a restaurant, but when you talk to the citizens, they'll always tell you that the best Rolex is the one bought from the street. We have a lot of street food in Uganda, and I had to include a picture of <clears throat> this young man here. Uh, it's a standard in every neighborhood. He's what we call the Rolex guy. And most of us will prefer to get a Rolex from our local Rolex guy near home. <clears throat> then for the snacks, um, because of the vast weather and the um, the forest and everything going on in Uganda, we have a lot of grasshoppers and we actually eat this. We like to fry these with a little oil and onions and salt, very crunchy and nice. Then we also eat white ants in Uganda. Some of you might recognize this. Uh, we get these and we also fry them. And some cultures also make it into a paste that they add to food. Then uh, we also have gonja, very popular in Uganda. This is made, this is actually what I think West Africans will call this plantain. We call it gonja in Uganda and we have this so many ways. We have it dried and packaged as a snack. We have it roasted and no road trip is complete without some roasted gonja. And then we also have it fried. But aside from this, we also have um, simsim. Uh, I think these are called sesame seeds. We like to make these into little balls with honey and eat that. Then we also have roasted groundnuts and pumpkin seeds, popular snacks in Uganda. Then um, it's always important for us to acknowledge our East African nests. And like our neighbors in Kenya and Tanzania, 
We call that the coastal influence that they've had on our food. We also have a lot of chapati and mandazi being made in Uganda, uh, also very popular next to the street guy. Next to the Rolex guy on the street is usually a guy who has mandazi or chapati. Then we also have a lot of uh, what we call fried cassava and also pancakes. I uh, haven't, I'm yet to see these outside of Uganda, but pan our version of pancakes are made from cassava flour mixed with bananas and then flattened into what you see here. Then you cut it into a circle shape and you fry it. It's also very nice and very healthy. So I'm going to hand over to Peter to walk you through our cultural leadership. Uh, thank you very much, Summer. Um, so um, in Uganda, uh, kingdoms and chiefdoms are a source of pride and identity for many of us. Uh, we identify with the regions that we come from and we're very proud to be belong to a tribe and belong to a particular region. So in, uh, but however, um, in 1967, uh, the president Obote, Milton, Dr. Milton Obote, abolished kingdoms, uh, which was, uh, he, he, saw the, he saw the kingdoms as, as a threat to his rule, um, but they were restored by the current president Museveni in 1986 when he took over power. And they, of course, you have the, the map on the side shows the different tribes. Uh, you have the Buganda in the central, you have Basoga in the east, Teso, Sebe, Karam Karamoja, Acholi, West Nile, Toro, Ankole, Kigezi. I mean, it's very beautiful. Uganda is very diverse in terms of, of, of culture, right? It's very rich and, 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 and diverse, right? So to the kingdoms, so we'll just walk through a few of the kingdoms that we have, uh, because starting off with the, with the most prominent and the largest kingdom that we have in Uganda, which is the Baganda Kingdom, uh, it's the largest known in Uganda, um, and the the language that they speak there is uh, is Luganda. So in so Kampala is is part is is in the Buganda Kingdom. So that's why when you go to Kampala, you definitely have to learn some Luganda. Luganda, they will definitely greet you. Jevaleko, Wasuzotia, you will hear those for good morning and hello. Yeah. So the the current king of 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 Uganda is uh, Ronald Mwenda Mtesa. Uh, and his wife, uh, Nawa Gerika of, of Uganda, a very respectable woman, woman who, who represents uh, the, the ladies in Uganda. She has a program that is rich in terms of teaching values to people, especially the ladies, in terms of what they hold, um, um, uh, the, what they, the value they bring to society. Yeah, so she's a very, very uh, prominent prominent figure in in. in uh, in, uh, in Uganda. So the Baganda also have totems whereby you cannot, that signify the identity. I don't know if you have them in, in your different countries. So, um, and they identify you and then you cannot marry someone from the same totem. It's not allowed uh, because that person is considered to be your brother or your mother or your 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 auntie or something like that. So, so for example, and 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 um, it is so serious in the, in the sense that if, any of my parents belong to the, a, a, a totem that the person that I am relating with is, or maybe their parents. We are not allowed; to, we would not be allowed to marry each other. So that's how serious the totems are. So these were put in place to avoid that uh, the, 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 the the disadvantages that come with with marrying for, for closely within uh, your your tribe. Um, um, they they are popular. It's one of the oldest kingdoms, so it's popular. They have shrines. They have uh, the traditional healers and a lot of other interesting things. And their dance is called the Chiganda dance. So on the next slide, we go to the next kingdom, which is the Toro kingdom. So the Toro kingdom is located in Western Uganda, uh, seated around the district called Fort Porto. So Fort Porto um, was named by the British. Uh, it is ruled by uh, Omukama, which means king. The current king is Oyo Nyimba Kabamba Iguru, the fourth. And uh, it's also very rich in culture and they have a lot of pet, they have pet names, uh, including Akiki, Amoti, Adieri. This is like now the kind of like totems they belong to. Um, and that's how they identify themselves. So in uh, in Toro, it is so it is even more concrete that you will find that uh, people will call each other by their pet names. Uh, if someone is called Amoti, I will call her Amoti as opposed to Samalipi one or yeah. 
Um, so economically, they are known for agriculture. They grow food uh, crops like coffee, uh, bananas. They belong to the Bantu tribe. And also, um, when they are greeting, they greet orairota, meaning how did you, how was your night? How did you sleep? Uh, they have one of the most interesting policies. Uh, it's called Karuzika. It's the big, it's the pinkish uh, structure building you see, um, that you see. And also one of their the animals that they, they, they embrace is the lion. And that lion you see is at the center of Fort Porto. It's at the center of around about in Fort Porto in Western Uganda. I also need to mention that their king is also the youngest king in the whole of uh, Uganda. So he took all, he came into he took the, the the kingdom when I think he was about three. His father passed on, and then he came into uh, the leadership. They they um they integrated him to be the leader, and is currently the serving leader of uh, Toro Kingdom. And then the next we have uh Busuka Kingdom. So Busuka Kingdom is the eastern is in the eastern part of Uganda. And is ruled by the Chabazinga. Uh, so they probably the one of the most interesting things uh, about the Chabazinga is that he currently wedded uh, his his wife, uh, uh, Queen Jovia, who are now currently happy and uh, married in uh, the Busoga Kingdom. Um, also, I've mentioned that uh, uh, Busoga Kingdom is 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 near Jinja. If you know Jinja in Uganda, it's a, it's the it's the fun of is the capital for fun in Uganda. Uh, that's where you find a lot of interesting activities. You find the source of the Nile, uh, the River Nile, which goes all which is the longest river uh, in Africa. It goes all the way to Egypt. Uh, you will find uh, Lake Victoria. You will find a lot of fun activities like bungee jumping, uh, water rafting. Um, and a lot of uh, boat cruises, um, you'll find a lot of uh, interesting things uh, in Jinja. Uh, so their language is Lusoga. It's quite, it, it, it is similar to, to Luganda. And I'm not sure I know how to pronounce this very well. Uh, I'll skip it for now. Maybe somebody knows, you can help me out. But uh, in how they greet the in Lusoga, so maybe we can just move on to the next slide. When it comes back, I'll, I'll, I'll be sure to, I'll be able to share it. So um, we can move on to the Acholi. So in the, in the northern part of Uganda, we have the Acholi uh, chiefdom located in northern Uganda. Uh, the leader is uh, Ruot. Uh, they are the 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 it's, it's the Luo tribe in uh, in in uh, in northern Uganda. And when they are they are greeting, they say. Irema bear. <laughs> and then also one of the other famous uh, greetings they have is Kopango. <laughs> so usually when we were kids and you had neighbors from the north, you would always go and say, hey, Kopango. <laughs> yeah, so they uh, they have they they have very they rich tradition in terms of um their dance. They have they put on those things that look like uh, big uh, feathers on their heads, and they have the 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 footwear they wear and then when they're dancing they it makes noise. Um uh, the ladies uh just in the lower right corner uh are carrying uh the, the like a local the local weaved bowls. So it's an art uh to basically have that on your head and also be able to perform without dropping it. So it kind of like takes a lot of practice. So they are very talented. Uh, in terms of uh, dancing and uh, yes, and sharing their culture, uh, yes. So moving on to the next uh, slide. Uh, the other kingdoms uh, we have the Bunyoro Kitara Kingdom, um, also in Western Uganda. We also have the Ankoli Kingdom in uh, Western Uganda as well. Um, then moving on to the next, um, we also have a group of New Ugandans. What we call the New Ugandans. We have the Rwandans who reside in uh, in in Uganda. Uh, we have the Indians, we have the Somalis and Ethiopians, and then South Sudanese who have uh, lived in Uganda for very long, and they have probably they have become part of the community. And in some cases, where like the Ethiopians, you will find uh, uh, places like like Ethiopian village and Ethiopian places where they have the their traditional foods like injera uh, and the coffee. Um, and are, those places are very well known for having Ethiopians. We also have an Ethiopian church 
uh, in in Uganda, uh, where the Ethiopians go and then they they are able to worship and 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 pray to to their gods. And then moving on to the next. Uh, so in terms of sports, um, Uganda is 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 uh, is also rich in sports. We have uh, world champions, uh, uh, Joshua Cheptegei, uh, who at the Olympics is the gentleman holding the flag. So in the Olympics uh, in Tokyo, he won the gold for the 5,000 meter. And in the world finals in Doha 2019, he won the 10,000 meter gold race. And in Eugene 2022, he won the gold 10,000 meter race. And in Budapest 2023, he won the gold uh, in uh, the gold 10,000 meter race. Uh, Joshua, oh, sorry, this is Limo, is the one on the left. He earned gold medals for the 5,000 meter and uh, 10,000 meter race at the 2022 Commonwealth Games. So these athletes have put uh, Uganda on, on, on the map. So we have a couple of other athletes like uh, Dokas Zikuru and uh, um, uh, Salmon Colter, I think Naka something. Uh, the national football team, which is yet to win the African Cup of Nations and the World Cup, is the Uganda Cranes. Uh, so in, in the Uganda Cranes, we have uh, some of the uh, people who have some of the players like uh, the goal, the goalkeeper who has played for Sundowners in, in South Africa. We have uh, David Obua who has also made international scene, like who has played for Red Bull. We have Ibrahim Sekadja who has also played for Red Bulls and in and out of the country, and they have represented the country so well. Um, we are still very. I also need to mention that in twenty twenty six. Uh, Uganda will host the the Afcon together with Kenya and Tanzania. So if you've never been to Uganda, this would be a very wonderful time for you to visit uh, the country and maybe witness some of the Afcon matches. We're very excited and we're refurbishing our stadiums, uh, our biggest stadium being Nambole, to host the African Cup of Nations. So it's the first time it's going to be happening in East Africa and in Uganda also in particular. So we're very excited to be hosting this national uh, international uh, national the international tournament so moving on to the next um in entertainment uh we have hollywood stars who originally come from uganda uh they uh, they have acquired uh, citizenships with other countries but they are originally from uganda we have daniel kaluya who was in the famous black panther um movie we have Sheila Atim, who featured in uh, uh, Doctor Strange. And then we have Florence Kasumba, who was part of the Dollar Mirage in Black Panther. So we are very proud to have such international icons uh, coming hailing from Uganda. And then moving on to the next slide. Uh, yes, uh, entertainment and music, or some of our biggest artists. We have Jose Chameleon. He calls himself Dr. Jose Chameleon. He's not a real doctor, but he's he, Dr. Jose Chameleon. Uh, we have Bebe Cool, uh, we have uh, Bobby Wine. Bobby Wine is now a politician uh, who is very trying to run for presidency. Uh, we wish him all the best. We have uh, Eddie Kenzo, who has been nominated for the uh, Grammy Awards, uh, People's Choice Awards, and he worked away with an award, so he made the country very proud. And uh, if you know dance very well, you've probably seen the Ghetto Kids. They come from Uganda. They were on British Got Talent. And I think they made it to almost the finals as well. Uh, so that's a bit about Uganda. So uh, let's see what's next. I think we're about to, we're wrapping up with our presentation. Um, yes, that brings us to the end. Yes, that brings us to the end of the presentation. Uh, we are eager to hear the kind of questions that you have and we'll be excited to answer them. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Cindy and Peter. That was very, 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 very informative. And to others, I'll just say Javeleko. <laughs> I don't know if they know the response to that, but for me, I've learned a lot. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. So, yeah. Um, just to, just going straight to the questions and answers, I congregated a few questions that others were, <clears throat> were, were pointing out to. 
Um, the first one was posted in the question and answer uh, space. Uh, you're seeing that um, President Seveni has been president since then. Like he was just asking for how long was uh, President Seveni president since then. Um, Okay. Uh, I'll take that. So President Kusimit is actually still the president of Uganda. So that's a little over 30 years now that he has been our president. So he's still the president of Uganda. Okay, thank you. 30 years, yeah. <laughs> it's quite it's quite a long time. So let's, yeah, let's just say let's just say uh we have only known one president since we were born. Wow. <laughs> really? Yes, we are Yeah. Okay, it's quite interesting. It's quite interesting. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. It's just like here in Zimbabwe. It's almost the same, uh, the same, the same situation, but then yeah, it's fine. So going on to the second question, um, there was this person who was asking that can we is it possible, is it feasible to marry someone from the same tribe? He was actually relating to where you were saying about totems, you're saying um, you can't really marry somebody with the same totem. So he was now asking, what about if we are from the same tribe, but different totems? <clears throat> yes, you, you, you can marry someone from the same tribe, different totems. So one of the things that they will, they will, they will, they, they, that they emphasize is that when you're starting out a relationship, uh, you need to check, you need to ask uh, your person uh, what the, the, the totems, you need to ask their what their dad's totem is, what their mom, ideally they would take on their dad's totem, but you also need to find out what their mom's totem is. So, and then check with your own. Uh, so when you're sure, then, then you can proceed with the relationship. If you're not, uh, the, if, if, if it, you find that you don't check out, maybe you have the totem, it's better to end the relationship at that stage when it's still early. Otherwise, the, you, you, might, you will, might most likely get disappointed. So, um, Personally, I've had a couple of friends who have gone through this, and uh, uh, one particular their person's dad's totem was, but they didn't find out about the mom. So when they were getting into now the probably the, the stages where they get serious now and meeting family, they found out that uh, the, the 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 gentleman had the same totem with the, the, no the lady's dad had the same totem with the 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 the, the guys. Uh, mom and the relationship part, and it was a very, it was very sad. So, uh, it's always encouraged to to find out what um what the 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 totem is. However, I also need to mention that this is uh in Buganda. When you go to Western Uganda, uh, the Banyankole, those ones marry their cousins. So it's not like everywhere. It's uh, it's 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 like if you have a second cousin, so you can marry that second cousin. So like uh. The, the the part of the totem is in Buganda, in Buganda, in central Uganda. That's but in the western, it's different. So, again, it goes to show how diverse the country is. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, just to add on, what would be the consequences? Say some is say it's a worst case scenario, and somebody doesn't uh, uh, like leave the relationship whereby they have been having same totems. What's the worst case scenario if somebody proceeds with the relationship? <laughs> Well, you won't get support from the from the parents, from your parents, uh, the, your relatives, your aunties, your uncles. Well, if you're a person who doesn't really care about that, you can continue. But I guess it will be very difficult uh, for you as a couple. Uh, but uh, you will struggle probably. If, maybe if you don't want to make a wedding, maybe you can you can go. But if you make a wedding, you will not you will not be sure who to invite, who not to invite. Uh, traditional functions won't be built, blessed by the. The aunties, the uncles, the 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 the, the elders. Um, well, it will just be very difficult. But certainly you can. But it will be very difficult. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, guys. This is very, 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 very informative. Yeah, we are learning a lot. So yeah, jumping on to the to the next question. <laughs> I've got I've got lots of questions here. People were asking lots, lots, lots of questions. So the next question is like uh, somebody was asking relating to your culture as a norms. You are saying that uh, what is the reason behind kneeling for women kneeling to to men and do they actually kneel for everyone? I think it's a quick question, Daro. 
Okay, I'll take that. So again, the kneeling depends on the tribe. For example, in Buganda and in Eastern Uganda and in Northern Uganda, kneeling is usually expected of, of women. And it's something that you grow up doing. And actually, interestingly enough, for children, whether it's a boy or a girl, they're expected to kneel. So for example, let's say your aunties come home, your uncles come home, you're going to be expected, whether you're a boy or a girl, to kneel down and greet them. But then as we get older, um, the kneeling is reserved for, let's say, uh, you have visitors at home, you, you kneel to greet them. Or let's say you're serving someone like um, your parents or your grandparents. It, it really looks weird in, in most cultures to bend to serve someone. So you're yeah. expected to kneel and serve them. But um, it's not to say that it's tied to the women alone because most times, if, if a Ugandan is, let's say you're from like a, the tri a tribe that kneels, if you're greeting someone of authority, for example, um, a politician or even like the, uh, the Waganda, when they're greeting their king, they do not greet him standing up. So it's not that it's women only, there are special cases where like both both men and women are expected to kneel. And I had mentioned the tribe because not like in Western Uganda, where Peter is from, it's not kneeling is not a thing. So in that tribe, the women are not expected to kneel. Um, there they kneel maybe because they want to, but it's not something that will be expected of them. And then maybe also to say that it also really depends on the family you're from. Some families are more traditional than others. So for example, in mine, uh, if 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 I if I hug my uncle, let's say it won't be seen so strange. But then there are other families where, let's say, the girls, uh, you go to visit and they are only there to greet you. Whether it's like a fellow man can kneel to greet you because you're a visitor in her home. So it really really depends on on the situation and the scenario and who is being greeted. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that clarity. Yeah. So, um. If there's anyone who has any questions, you can feel free to ask them in the question and answer section so that, that I may uh, respond to that. But then, up to then, uh, going on to the next uh, question, uh, the somebody who is asked uh, particularly about the crested bird, uh, you are saying that given that the crested bird is, is sacred and not to be touched, uh, is what, what procedures are, are you guys doing given that maybe it will overpopulate? Uh, what 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 are you doing to like to control its its population? That's all. <clears throat> the the crested crane is uh, well all animals um uh, actually wildlife in uh, in in uh, in, uh, in Uganda is 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 is, is, is considered a national asset. So it's not just the crested crane. So um. But you'll find special like uh, uh, there are special game reserves for all animals like Queen Elizabeth National Park, Maction Falls National Park. These animals, um, they it's very rare to actually see a crested crane. Um, so I don't think the population is all that much. Even when you talk about uh, the other animals, maybe like lions, elephants, buffaloes, we all have this, but you will probably not find them where the people are settled. So the population, I don't, is not a problem because even other birds, there's, there's no particular bird where we need to control its population. Um, maybe, the, okay, maybe the only birds we, 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 we actively affect their population are the domestic birds like the turkeys, the chicken. But when it comes to all these wild birds and wild animals, we don't uh, do anything about um, controlling their population. If in any case, we would want their population to increase because um, um, they, we consider them sacred. Probably if they were even more, we'd be happier. Okay. Thank you very much for that. And uh, I think this would be my the last question that I will pose uh, due to the sake of time. Uh, I'll try to squeeze it. Um, you're saying that... Um, do you guys conduct elections given that there is a candidate who have ran for more than 38 years in, in parliament? Uh, and is there a limit for contesting, say, maybe five five um, sessions or five five terms for contesting? And uh, what system really, really does Uganda run using? 
I don't know if <laughs> if you can ask it. Peter? Oh, I thought someone was going to take it. Uh, we, we can do half and half. So I'll start right. and say, um, Uganda is a democratic country. So yes, we have elections every five years. We had elections in 2021. And the next ones are going to be in 2026. It's usually a very intense and exciting time for the country. And yes, you have acknowledged that we have um, our, our, our most popular president. But um, what I can say is that there have been candidates that have been so close to to taking over presidency, but the current president is very popular. That's the truth. So you find that the, he's usually winning by like half the country will vote him and then the other half will split the votes between the other candidates. So we are democratic. Yes, we hold elections. And Peter, do you have anything else to add? Yeah. Well, uh, for our case, we don't have it in terms of limit how many times someone can stand as president. They can literally stand as many times as they want. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I think the rest of them, as mentioned, we do have elections. Uh, They're usually very, very heated. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, just, just real quick in that one minute, just to answer somebody's last question. Uh, you're saying that uh, where do you see Uganda in the next 10 years given the 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 financial stability or political stability in the next 10 years? Uh, that's a really interesting question. Um, earlier we mentioned that the population of Uganda is 45 million and I wanted to say that uh, um, a little over 50% of those people are actually below the age of 18. So half of the country is actually children. So I think that Uganda still has a lot of room, like there's so much that can be done. There's so much room for innovation, for business, and so many things that we can get done. I think Uganda's future is bright, and politically, we are quite stable. Uh, Peter. What are your thoughts yeah. on this? But yeah, that, that's my opinion. Yeah, Uganda's future is very bright. We do have a very young population, so that means we do have a large workforce uh, that is available to work in the industry. And then we have a couple of organizations like the National Social Security Fund, uh, which is the serving body for all workers, that is putting a lot of effort into entrepreneurship uh, and industry. So these young people are being uh, introduced to, to their being, the, the ideas are being incubated into um, things that can result into industry or that can take on this workforce. Uh, we also uh, look at uh, our tourism industry is growing. Uh, we have the famous um, Nyege Nyege, across the, which is a basically a, a popular tourist attraction for a lot of people in the region. Uh, well, if you haven't been to one, you should, you should consider, consider it. Um, we also have, of course, our future is definitely bright. We have a lot of uh, resources. We have oil that is being drilled. So in terms of finance, we think that uh, this oil will benefit us. Uh, yeah, so basically, yeah, I think our, our future is really, is, is really bright. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it was, it was quite an informative session. Thank you very much to Peter. In assembly P1, but then due to time, I think due to time constraints, I think maybe it just uh, unfortunately the end of the session. And um, I just wanted to acknowledge that um, uh, we have learned a lot with regards to the cultures, traditions, and values of Uganda, from the food, the the political history, the Idi Amin's, the food, the Rolex. And the language, <laughs> and I, Jeff Eleko, yeah, I think if the session would have been two hours, we would have been fluent in Luganda. But then, yeah. Uh, so to everyone who missed the session or is, uh, came in uh, late, I uh, just want to acknowledge you that the session will be uh, posted on YouTube. Uh, the link will be provided to also circulate. Um, 
and yeah i think that's pretty much it okay That's fine. I wanted to ask him a question, but I guess first time already, so it's not. Oh, okay. Apologies to that. I I didn't really see that. Um. Uh, how would you feel about asking it right now? Is it? Are you still comfortable to ask? Yeah, sure. So I wanted asking about like the 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 president. And it's quite like surprising that like. They are practicing like the democratic system. Uh, like I also understand like why did that like almost half of the country or half of the country keeps like voting him? Is it that like do you guys think he's like a very good president? And if you guys are considering like the future of the Uganda, do you think him still remaining in power um would help towards like improving or like developing um Uganda more? I just wanted to get like you guys like opinion as regards to that. Yeah, Peter or Sambili. Yeah. Okay, I think yeah. Okay. okay. So I, I, I I'm going to acknowledge um We've mentioned that we had eight presidents, but there's a period of time in Uganda where I think in like 10 years we had, we went through like um, six of them. Uh, um, President Milton Obote had two regimes, like he came on, then he came off, then he came on again. We've had a very turbulent history in terms of presidency. So some of why President Museveni is so popular is because uh, we mentioned earlier that he, he ended the regime of uh, President Idi Amin and then also the one of Milton Obote. So he's credited for being the person that stopped that. Um, we had a lot of power struggles in Uganda. So first and foremost, he's as popular as he is because um, for a lot of us, he symbolizes stability. He's the one that ended the whole back and forth that we're having and just uh, took over power, yes, but we uh, some of our most stable and highly developmental years have been under his. Education, schools, infrastructure, in attracting investors. So he's as popular as he is because he symbolizes stability for a lot of us. And yes, in the future, inevitably, we're going to have to have a transition of power. And I guess we'll see what happens when we get there. But for now, yeah, um, he's our most stable president. Peter, anything to add? No, you've uh, really, really covered it. Um, I hope we've answered your question. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you, Norman. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Miriam, for that question. And uh, just to reiterate, uh, thank you very much, Peter, in Sambli. It was a very informative session. Uh, you've done a really great job. And I would like to express my thanks to everyone who joined, um, contributing the questions and everything. I It was a very fun session, informative session. Um, so as I said before, the link for the YouTube will be posted uh, in the YouTube, uh, there will be a YouTube video of this recording um, and will be provided to you. So yeah. So till next time, thank you everyone. Um, thank you very much for joining and all the best, goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.